The process by which the cells of our body replicate DNA molecules is very complicated. In fact, it involves over 20 different types of proteins and enzymes that work together and coordinate the synthesis of that replicated DNA molecule. Now, in 1958, an individual by the name of Arthur Kornberg and his team essentially isolated and studied a specific type of protein involved in the replication process of E. coli cells. And this protein became known as DNA polymerase. In fact, inside our body, we also use DNA polymerase uh, to synthesize replicated DNA molecules. So, in this lecture, what we're going to discuss is how the DNA polymerase actually works. And we're going to discuss what the DNA polymerase needs to actually synthesize that DNA molecule during the replication process. So let's begin by looking at the general equation that describes how DNA polymerase actually works. So let's suppose inside our cell, we are replicating the DNA molecule. And so far we have n number of nucleotides in our DNA polynucleotide chain. So we have n number of nucleotides in the DNA molecule. Now, if we want to add one more nucleotide, we actually have to take the DNTP, the deoxynucleoside triphosphate, and add it onto the DNA molecule. In the process, what we do is we form a phosphodiester bond between this molecule and this molecule. And so what we do is we extend the DNA chain by one, and so now we have n plus one number of nucleotides. And in the process, Process, every time we form the phosphodiester bond, we release a PP molecule, where PP stands for pyrophosphate. So what the DNA polymerase molecule does is it catalyzes the formation of a phosphodiester bond by adding a deoxynucleoside triphosphate, the DNTP, onto that growing polypeptide chain. And in the process, every time we add the deoxyribonucleotide onto that growing chain in a stepwise fashion, we release the pyrophosphate molecule. And we'll discuss what the pyrophosphate molecule is in much more detail when we discuss the replication process. So in this lecture, our goal is simply to discuss what the function, what the general function of DNA polymerase is. Now, for DNA polymerase to actually function effectively, it has to have three different things. So A, B, and C. And D, we simply discuss one important fact about the DNA polymerase molecule. So let's begin with A. So in the same way that if we want to build a building, we have to have the, uh, the bricks, the building blocks to build that building, to build a polynucleotide chain, we have to have the DNTP molecules, the deoxynucleoside triphosphates. And there are four different types of DNTP molecules. We have deoxyadenosine 5 prime triphosphate. We have deoxyguanosine 5 prime triphosphate. We have deoxypyridine 5 prime triphosphate. And we have the thymidine 5 prime triphosphate. So for the DNA polymerase to actually build and extend the DNA polynucleotide chain, it has to have those four nucleotides swimming around in that solution. Without those nucleotides, it will not be able to build our structure in the same way that we cannot build a building without the bricks, the building blocks. Let's move on to B. So DNA polymerase requires a template DNA strand and that's because it's the template DNA strand that essentially provides the blueprint, the instructions to build that replicated strand of DNA. And this is analogous to the following scenario. So let's suppose we have a construction worker and the construction worker has to build a building. Now, the construction worker cannot build that building without having the blueprint that was 
created by the architect. And in the same exact analogous way, the template DNA strand is that architect that provides the blueprint the instructions to actually build the structure that polynucleotide chain. So DNA polymerase obtains its instructions from the pre-existing DNA template that is found in that double helical structure. So remember, in that double helix, we have two of these template strands that basically run in an anti-parallel direction. And when we replicate DNA molecules, those two strands essentially separate, and when they separate, we can, we can use, DNA polymerase can use those templates to synthesize those new replicated polynucleotide chains. So the DNA polymerase can only add new nucleotides onto that growing polypeptide chain as long as the new nucleotides are complementary to the bases found on that template DNA molecule. Now let's move on to C. Another thing that DNA polymerase actually needs is a primer. So with the primer, we can initiate that DNA replication process. Now, what exactly is a primer? Well, a primer is simply a sequence of nucleotides that are already attached onto that DNA template. And what that primer has is a free three prime hydroxyl group that can basically create that first phosphodiester bond and we'll see exactly how that looks like in just a moment. So there are three things that DNA polymerase needs. It needs the building blocks, the deoxynucleoside triphosphate molecules and we have four different types. It actually needs that blueprint and that's the template DNA strand that exists in that double helical structure of DNA found inside our nuclei. C, it also needs a primer because the primer must exist for us to extend and build that uh, phosphodiester bond as we'll see in just a moment. It also actually needs magnesium ions because these magnesium ions essentially increase the efficiency of these DNA polymerase molecules and we'll discuss that in much more detail when we'll discuss the DNA replication process. Now D. So D is more of a fact about DNA polymerase molecules and what D tells us is DNA polymerase can actually correct its own mistakes. So if the DNA polymerase accidentally mismatches a base, it can actually go back, remove that base and put in the correct base that it basically mismatched. And what that means is the DNA polymerase rarely makes mistakes. And when it does make a mistake, it can basically fix that mistake on its own accord. In fact, for every 100 million nucleotides that the DNA polymerase lays down correctly, it only makes one mistake. And that's a very, very high accuracy. So DNA polymerase has the ability to remove and replace nucleotides that have been incorrectly placed. This means that DNA polymerases rarely make mistakes and when they do, they can fix the mistakes on their own. So let's take a look at the following diagram, which basically describes how we form the phosphodiester bond. And as we discuss this, we can imagine that the DNA polymerase molecule hovers about this position and catalyzes the formation of this phosphodiester bond. So here we have the DNA template that we're going to use to basically pair up the correct complementary bases. And this template is needed to actually form that polynucleotide chain correctly. So this is the DNA template, this is the 3 end, and this is the 5 end. Now, this is the primer, and the primer basically contains the sequence of nucleotides, and on the final nucleotide, we have this sugar with a base that contains this free 3 prime, uh, uh, three prime hydroxyl group. So, if we are to label these carbons here, this is carbon number 1, carbon number 2, carbon number 3, 
four and five. And so this three position carbon contains a free hydroxyl group that can nucleophilically attack this phosphorus atom of this triphosphate group. And this is the phosphodiester bond that is formed that we spoke about earlier. So essentially, we have the DNA polymerase essentially hovering over this molecule. And when this nucleotide, so this is one of the DNTP nucleotides that we spoke about earlier, the DNTP molecule comes in close proximity as long as this base is complementary to this base. So we have to use the DNA template molecule to basically figure out which base is complementary to this base. And only then will this form a strong enough interaction for this to actually remain in place. And when that takes place, the RNA polymerase molecules, as well as other proteins involved and other enzymes involved, essentially catalyze the nucleophilic addition of this phosphodiester bond. So we have these electrons attacking this phosphate, and that kicks off this bond. And so this is the pho uh, this is this molecule that is formed here, the pyrophosphate. It is broken, and then we form that bond between this molecule and uh, between this oxygen and this P atom. And so we form that phosphodiester bond. Now notice as we form the polynucleotide chain, we form that chain from the 5N to the 3N. And in fact, the DNA molecule, the DNA polymerase always forms that polynucleotide chain in this direction, beginning at the 3N and traveling towards that, or beginning at the 5N and traveling towards the 3N. So once again, DNA polymerase catalyzes the formation of the phosphodiester bond. And the three prime a hydroxyl group of the sugar on the primer nucleophilically attacks the innermost phosphorus atom of this triphosphate group of the DNTP molecule that we are base pairing with this base found on the DNA template. And so this forms our phosphodiester bond. We extend our DNA molecule by one nucleotide. In the process, we release the pyrophosphate molecule. And as we'll see in a future lecture, it's the formation and the breaking of that phospho, uh, of that pyrophosphate molecule that drives this replication process forward.